Okay, this is the beginning of our probability units, and here we're just covering basic definitions. So let's jump into this. So some some important definitions going forward, and you'll you'll see them uh, interspersed throughout various lectures. So let's go through these. The result of an experiment is called an outcome. Okay, so you've got an outcome, an event. Notice is a group, is a particular outcome or a group of outcomes. A simple event means that an event cannot be broken down any further. And then a sample space is just a set of all your simple outcomes. And then you have what's called a compound event. So when you roll a die, which is a single, it's a, like a dice means a pair. So a single one is called a die. The sample space is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Rolling the two is a simple event. Rolling the odd number, okay? So odd numbers are one, three, and five. That's what you call com a, a compound event because you've got multiple outcomes. And then you have what's called a standard deck of cards. Now, if you're, you're not familiar with a standard deck of cards, I suggest you do an internet search and get an image of a standard deck of cards and just print it out because that will help you answer a lot of these questions because you will have that standard deck in front of you. Okay, and so now we're going to apply a simple event and compound events. So you have, two, you have 13 cards in each suit, which are spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. The 13 cards in, cards in each suit are an ace, king, queen, jack, the number 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. You don't include jokers in the standard deck of cards. So drawing the queen of diamonds, simple event. There's only one queen of diamonds in the standard deck. Drawing a 4, okay, that, that's a compound event because you have four of spades, the four of hearts, the four of clubs, and the four of diamonds. And so this is what you call now defining what probability is. And so they use notation that's high now. So they'll say P and then they'll have E is just simply your event. It's the number of outcomes to the event E and which you could actually call this your desired outcomes or the outcomes that you're looking for over your total number of equal likely outcomes or your total outcomes. All right, so let's start with two quick examples. All right, we've got a six-sided fair die. We want to find the probability of rolling a six. So... I always start with my total outcomes. That's six. Okay? There's only one six on a die. So that's your fractional form. One over six. Now, if they ask you for a decimal, and they may, they probably will, they may say, I'm going to go four decimal places. So 0.1667. That's the probability of rolling a six. So fractional form, decimal form, they may even ask you for the form as a percent. So you can convert that as well. Probability of rolling the odd number. Okay, again, there are three. I'm sorry, there are six total outcomes available, but there are three odd numbers. So we simplify our fraction to one half. Now, if they want a decimal, you go ahead and convert. That's 0.5 or 0.50. Same exact math. All right, so now let's move into the standard deck of cards. So the probability of drawing the queen of diamonds. Now, I know my deck has 52 cards. There's only one queen of diamonds. So you try to simplify it. You can't, so that's 1 out of 52, or 1 over 52, or they may say a 52nd, okay? Um, so that's 
So 1 divided by 52, if we want a decimal answer, we're going to go with 0 0.0192 as the decimal answer. So the second example, the probability of drawing a 4. Right in the standard deck, there are four fours. You got 52 cards. You always simplify your fraction. So that's 1 13th. That's your fractional solution. Your decimal form is 0 .0, 0 0.0769. And again, that's the four decimal place. Right now, you have a marble is drawn. That should be marble. A marble is drawn from a jar that contains six red marbles, two white marbles, and five yellow marbles. Find the probability of drawing in this first example. probability of drawing a red marble. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how many marbles you have in that jar. That's 6 plus 2 plus 5, which is that's 8. That's 13 potential outcomes. Now I'm going to write all the answers moving forward as, as fractional forms. Okay, so that's 13 potential outcomes. My desired outcome, I'm focused on red marbles only. So that's 6 out of 13. All right, example B, in this case, we've got the probability of drawing a white marble from this jar. Again, we've got 13 potential outcomes. We have two white marbles. Both of those numbers are prime, so they can't be simplified. So 2 over 13. And again, if they want decimals, convert that fraction to a decimal. If they want a percent, convert the fraction to a percent. Then you have a couple more definitions. An impossible event has a probability of zero. Now, if they use percents, that's zero percent. So zero percent chance. A certain event has a probability of one. So that's the same thing as 100%. Now, it's important to note that you cannot have negative probabilities and you can't have probabilities over 100%. So when people say things like, I gave 110%, that's not true. Because the, all, the only thing you can give is what you have, and that's 100%. Okay, so probability is always going to be in between two values, 0 and one. Now, if you want this as percents, it'll be probabilities will be between zero and a hundred percent. So, no negatives. Uh, if you want fractions, you could say zero and a hundred over a hundred. Okay. All right. And now the complement. The complement simply means that an event does not happen, or you could say it's the opposite of an event. I think that's probably the more accurate word uh, description. So, but to compute it, all you do is you find the probability of whatever event that, that you're investigating. And then you subtract that from one to find the probability of the complement. Okay. And I'll demonstrate it in, in this next example. So we have a 12 sided die. And we want to find the probability of getting a number other than 8. So I'm going to do it as two steps. So the probability of rolling the 8, there's only one 8 on that die. There's 12 possible outcomes. So that's 1 12. So the probability of rolling a number other than 8 is simply 1 minus 1 12. Or you could simply say it's everything else. So 1 minus 1 12. That's 12 over 12 minus 1 12, which is 11 over 12. So that's your complement. Or they could you could write it this way, P8 
not or the complement of rho and the a is 11 twelfths. Same exact thing. And then this part. So we have what's called odds. Now, the definition here says that odds is the ratio of the probability that a particular event will occur to the probability that the event won't occur. And we always express odds in the simplest terms. So another way to, to express this, uh, the odds of an event occurring, uh, we can call this desired outcomes to undesired outcomes. So that's the odds for an event. All right, odds against event or odds against an event are your undesired outcomes to your desired outcomes. And let me add some notes notation. Now you may see the word two to represent odds. You may see uh, you may see a colon and you may see yeah, that's that's back. You may see two, you may see a colon, and you may see a fractional, okay? You can use all three of those expressions, two, colon, and a fraction bar to, rep to represent odds. And to add a little bit more clarification, even though odds is defined in this case as a probability or the ratio of a probability to a probability, I think these definitions down here provide a little bit more clarity and we'll see it in this, this example. So we have a standard deck of 52 cards. We wanna find the following. Odds, of fa odds in favor of drawing a face card. So you wanna know how many face cards. So write it out. Face cards, and we're gonna use a colon in this case to non-face cards. Now, odds is not the same as probability. It's a ratio of probabilities. So, if you look at a standard deck, so look at, it, look at a deck. If you've got a deck, look at all your face cards, which are queen, jack, and king. There are 12 face cards in that standard deck. All right. So that means the rest of those cards, the rest of those 52 cards, or the rest of the cards in the, in the, in the deck aren't face cards, so that's 40. So now notice when I add 12 and 40, I get 52, so I've covered all the cards. But we're gonna simplify because odds has to be expressed, They must, it has to be expressed in simplest terms. So I divide 12 by four, which is three. I divide 40 by four, which is 10. So the odds of drawing a face card in a standard deck of cards is three to 10, okay? So this is your answer, three to 10. Now you can write it in words, three to 10. That's the exact same. Or you can write it in fractional form, three to 10, okay? So that's that's odds. Now, odds against drawing a face card, it's the opposite. So odds against, so that's non-face cards. And you could say versus two face cards, all right? 
So we have 49, the face cards in the standard deck of cards, to 12 face cards. So you simplify this, and guess what? That's 10 to 3. Or you can use the words. So you can use a colon. You can use 10, 2, 3. Or you could write it as 10 over 3. Now, know this. Remember, a few slides back, we said that probability had to be less than or equal to 100, but greater than or equal to 0. So this 10 over 3, right, just... just don't rush, slow down when you do your problems. Notice, if you take 10 divided by 3, that's 3.33333 repeating. So that's not, that doesn't represent probability. That represents odds. So just be careful when questions ask you about odds and when they ask you about probability. Slow down, take your time, and apply your definitions. I hope this helps.